Good morning, Pastor Dan Smith here with your morning devotion for Friday, October 30th. We're preparing for an important day. Tomorrow is Halloween, but it's also Reformation Day. It's the day in um, 1517 when Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the door of the church castle in Wittenberg and unofficially began the Reformation. Um, and uh, it's an important day for Lutherans as heirs of that tradition and uh, who bear Luther's name. Our reading for today draws on this, and I have a, something I want to share with you that gets at this that I think is in line in the spirit of Luther. Our reading is from 2 Peter chapter 2. This is from our daily lectionary. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive opinions. They will even deny the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Even so, many will follow their licentious ways. And because of these teachers, the, tr the way of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Their condemnation pronounced against them long ago, has not been idle, and their destruction is not asleep. The Bible does not have kind words for false prophets because a prophet speaks on God's behalf. Just as somebody impersonating a police officer, that's a major problem, a major offense, because you're really violating trust. Somebody who claims to speak on God's behalf, but is deceptive or leads somebody down a bad path, really, really bad. So how are we to know when we're being led down the wrong path? I mean, many would say that there's folks today who are be deceiving others, you know, people in leadership that are deceptive, etc. It's hard to know sometimes. And so we have to be prayerful. We use scripture and tradition as our guide and common sense and reason. And we stay in conversation with one another. Tomorrow being Reformation Day, Martin Luther is so important. He kind of was a prophet, I think, that provides us some guidance. Far from perfect, as he himself would admit. Um, but I, he's one of the voices of our tradition that I've gone back to that helps me think through my faith and especially the centrality of God's grace, God's unconditional love for us in Christ Jesus. I'm going to share an excerpt from this book by Conversations with Martin Luther. This was written by my, one of my really close mentors, Tim Lowell, um, that, uh, from my master's thesis when I was in seminary. And this is a, an imaginary conversation between Dr. Lowell and Martin Luther, who visited him at, up on the hill at PLTS, Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, and sort of had it out with Tim, who written he wrote a compendium of Luther's writings in one big fat volume. And this is this is what Doctor um, <laughs> this is what Doctor uh, Luther had to say to Doctor Lowell in this imaginary conversation. Well. You haven't done badly, Lowell, he remarked, and I, I breathed such a clear sigh of relief that he laughed out loud. But where is my commentary on the Magnificat? I heard that you had planned to include that, but I don't find it here in the published edition. Luther was right. I had hoped to include that wonderful writing from his time in the Wartburg Castle it shows the tender regard with which Luther always spoke of the mother of our Lord, a great shock, to some subsequent Lutherans who came to assume that the Lutheran to be Lutheran was to do or think the opposite of the Roman Catholics on every issue. It also is a wonderful piece of Luther's own theology, for he finds in Mary's son the true pattern of the hidden and surprising ways of God, who was always casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. But how was I going to explain the reason that this document had been omitted? To understand this, I feared I would have to go into the whole sad history of the various Lutheran groups in the United States who jointly published Luther's works in those 55 volumes some decades ago. Those are Luther's works in the 1950s, but now do very little cooperatively. I began to explain legal matters to him. You see, Dr. Luther, the publishing rights to the Magnificat in English belong to the Concordia Publishing House of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, 
At that point, Luther interrupted with his hand held up. Say no more, Lull. I can well imagine that those who bear my name, a strange business in itself, and call themselves Lutherans, have me so chopped up that I have to be edited in competing volumes. I lowered my head, because Luther had gone to the heart of the matter, and there was nothing else to say on that front. Dr. Lull used to teach us, well, a lot about Luther. (laughs) He was funny, very, very forthright, and he would often go straight to the heart of the matter with pretty much everything. He didn't, there was no beating around the bush with him. And he could be crass and kind of disgusting at times. Uh, but he's one to read and he's interesting one to ponder, especially if we bear the name Lutheran Christian. <laughs> and an interesting guide for us in understanding God's uh, grace, mercy, and justice and how we, how we might live that in our world today. So I commend that to you as we prepare for Reformation Day slash Halloween, which is the Eve of All Hallows or the Eve of All Saints Day. And um, we close with a word of prayer. Trustworthy God, throughout all the ages, you have sent prophets to teach and lead your people, prophets such as Martin Luther. Protect us from false teachers. Raise up faithful prophets in our own day and grant that we may listen to them with discerning hearts. Amen. Now, dear friends, I wish you blessings and peace until we meet again.